What's up? Uh, welcome back. This is MacMovieGuy.com, and this is a movie review of Turning Red, uh, the new Disney Plus film uh, that just opened on Friday. It was supposed to open in theaters, but is currently streaming at your home in Disney Plus because Disney was afraid of Omicron. So, uh, and probably the quality of the film, to be completely honest. But um, just a little point of note. Uh, I haven't made a video in like four years because uh, I was losing my vision. So I am now the blind film critic. Uh, that doesn't really mean much for you. It just means I won't be talking about how great the film looks. Um, but in case you're wondering why, why is that man not making eye contact with the camera? That's why. I can't make eye contact with the camera. Um, I'm also doing it on an iPhone because it's a little bit easier for me to maintain with knowing even where the camera is in the room right now because <laughs> it's only a few feet away from my face. So uh, not a big deal, but uh, I will be talking about audio description. So if you are a member of the visually impaired and blind community, let's talk about the audio description for Turning Red. But first, the plot. So Turning Red is a film about a Chinese-Canadian 13-year-old girl who is going about her day, living her best life. Uh, she's an overachiever. She has an extremely overbearing mom, Ming, uh, who is uh, like the stereotypical helicopter parent. And... Uh, May, the 13-year-old girl, uh, when pushed too far with too many emotions, finds out that she turns into a giant red panda. Uh, of course, along the way, she learns more about herself and goes on this journey of self-discovery, but also a discovery of her family's history and why she's turning into a red panda. And the film's uh, climax becomes if she doesn't get rid of this red panda. She may stay that way forever. Um, it could be a bad thing, but is it really? Uh, or is that just what she's been told? So uh, you'll find out for yourself if you watch Turning Red, which in general you should, but this is not a perfect film. It's really tough nowadays to be a Pixar film because a long time ago, Pixar really set the bar for themselves with uh, films, I mean, honestly, right out of the gate with Toy Story, you know, uh, bam, uh, it's it's a classic. Um, I think it's on AFI's top 100 films of all time. So uh, it's really hard to beat that. Um, but Toy, Toy Story was followed with films like Finding Nemo and Wally -E and Up that just really knew how to nail the emotional connection. And uh, since then, you know, we've also had plenty of other films that, you know, Ratatouille uh, is great, uh, had that anybody can cook motif to it, um, Inside Out made us care for an imaginary friend that we, you know, never thought in a million years we would care that much about. So Pixar's done some really great work, and it's really hard to expect them to consistently top themselves. I really loved last year's Luca, which is also available on Disney+, Plus, um, but I definitely wouldn't put it in like the top five or top ten Pixar films, but I wouldn't take anything away from that film and say, you know, this is a bad film. I thought it was the best animated feature last year. Sorry, Encanto, but I did like Luca more than Encanto. Um, mainly because of that uh, connection and heart and struggle in the story. So um, what we have in Turning Red is uh, we have two characters. Uh, it's very much a uh, parental uh, story uh, between a, a mother and a child. So you could best compare this film to Brave. Uh, and if you do that, then Turning Red is not very good. Um, if you also compare it to Finding Nemo, then Turning Red is not very good. Because what those films did uniquely is that they took both of their characters on a journey. In Finding Nemo, both Nemo and Marlin manage to have this incredible growth. You know, Marlin starts out this uh, incredibly afraid 
uh, fish who's uh, overprotective and scared all the time. And then he goes out into the big blue world and uh, rescues his son. And then by the end of the film, he's made this clear transformation. But it's a transformation that was organic because we got to see it over the course of two hours. It wasn't just a snap your fingers transformation. And Nemo learns to trust himself more um, you know, without his dad around, uh, with his, you know, I can do it, uh, um, mindset, um, which is great. You know, uh, he's always been looked at as being sort of, uh, great for disabled kids to, to look at Nemo and, and see that, Hey, they can do anything too. And in Brave, uh, Merida and her mother, um, you know, her mother doesn't start at like a hundred percent. She's not like a, a terrorist or something at, at the beginning of the film. They just, they have a disagreement and, uh, the, the, and then brave happens the plot of the movie. So, um, but they clearly go on a journey of discovering each other, um, and apologizing and having to work together. And, um, both Merida and her mother make a considerable amount of growth, which leads to the final act, which makes the final act actually worth something. And that doesn't happen in Turning Red. May is probably one of the better well-written, uh, you know, human, I say human, but she turns, she's half the time, she's a red panda, human characters in, uh, uh Pixar's history, um, because of all of the transformation that she does go through. Um, one of the things that did work for me really well in this film was that May learns that her friends uh, are sort of her happy thoughts. She's got these ride or die friends that will do anything for her. Um, they immediately accept her for everything that she is, everything that she will be. Uh, you know, uh, when they find out she's a red panda, it's, it's, you know, no, nothing. They don't even, they're like, okay, how do we help? Let's do this. Uh, and I love that about them. I love that about the film. Um, but for a film that's so steeped in family and tradition and culture, uh, for, you know, Chinese Canadian culture, I think we were supposed to pick up more on that family element. But the problem with that is that Ming is terrible. She's a terribly written character. She's so cartoonishly over the top. She's like 200% uh, just beyond what she needs to be right from the very beginning of the film. She becomes, which is hilarious uh, in itself because she, uh, why, why would anybody, you know, we're supposed to be writing more films for diversity. Why would you lean into the Tiger Mom stereotype with her? And, uh, and not even, it's not even subtle. It's, it's actually extreme. Like she's, she literally like stalks her daughter to school and follows her around. And I know like the guise of that is that, you know, she's looking for signs of her turning into the red panda, but it, that's not an excuse because once May actually does awaken the red panda, which by the way, is largely Ming's fault. It's largely her mother's fault. Um, Ming's first assumption isn't, oh my god, red panda time. It's, oh, my daughter's on a period. So, um, turning red might also just be a period piece. Uh, and the red panda might just be a metaphor for time of the month. Because Disney does actually go there. Um, I don't have a problem with it. But, uh, I do think it's an interesting metaphor to put into this film given, uh, you know, the age that she is when she turns into the red panda, the fact that, uh, when we get around to it, um, it only affects women in the family. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of factors that really just make you think, are we talking about time of the month? <laughs> you know, um, but, uh, so anyway, Ming is, she's way over the legal limit of crazy, um, and, uh, it, it doesn't work, you know? I mean, even the father character who has actually more emotional impact in his like one scene, uh, with, with his daughter when he's actually allowed to speak because the wife is not in the room, um, than Ming does with her daughter in, at any point in the film until like the end. Um, the film builds to this climax with Ming where, 
uh, it's she just continues to be the villain of the story, which is, I suppose, interesting to make a, a, a mother-daughter movie where the mother is con constantly the villain of the story. There is no other villain. You can't really argue that anybody else in this film is a villain. I mean, maybe the character of Tyler for like five seconds, but by the end of the film, he's clearly on Team May. So uh, I don't, I don't really think you can make that argument for him. He makes his transformation. He has more character growth in this film as a supporting character than Ming does. Uh, Ming's the only development that we get from Ming is because of May. If May hadn't made. Uh, all the character growth that she has, she wouldn't be able to save her mom in the third act. Um, and the only reason that Ming reaches that point is because it's like she's hit a brick wall uh, and she can't go any further. And uh, May, I'm trying to do this without spoiling, even though it's it's a Pixar film and, and I don't know if this is really deep spoilers, but um, Ming just, it, it's more of like, just like a snap moments rather than something that's earned or uh, progressed over the course of the film. Uh, we are sort of hinted at some rather troubling things, like um, the probability that um, uh, mistreatment begats mistreatment, uh, because she had, Ming had a similar um, sort of falling out with her own mother, and uh, her own mother um, was kind of like how Ming is suggested, and because Ming was always trying to seek her approval, which is what May is trying to do with Ming, and why, uh, you know, this, this, uh, helicopter parent slash tiger mom narrative is damaging to May, um, and why basically her character growth is to learn how to stop, uh, seeking acceptance of, from her mom and just be herself. Um, it's very weird, very weird film. Um, a lot of it is good. Uh, I would still definitely recommend it um, because May's story arc is great. And if you have friends that are like ride or die friends, um, this film will actually hit with you in a way that I don't know that the original filmmakers expected. You know, they went out and uh, this is the feature directorial debut of the same person who brought us that adorable little Pixar short uh, where the old lady and makes the little dumpling. And uh, that was amazing. And this is not, it's not amazing, but it's also not terrible. Um, I would say it's better than like Cars 2 by a mile and The Good Dinosaur and probably Onward. But, um, you know, uh, it's, I, I can't throw it up there in the top echelon of Pixar films. But uh, I would, in a thumbs up, thumbs down world, I would give it a thumbs up. Now, audio description. The film is audio described, um, and it is done by a, a lady that I best could describe as a person I would want me, I would want to read me bedtime stories. Her voice is lovely. Um, the audio description is rich. It really just uh, fills out all of the characters. Um, I never felt like I was missing a beat in the plot or the film. I always knew where I was location wise. Um, I always knew the characters that were present. Um, it, it always felt, it felt like there was a lot of attention to detail within the audio description. So it has really great audio description. Um, so I would highly recommend that. So that's that, that's Turning Red. Uh, it's currently on Disney Plus. And uh, I don't know what would have happened had it gone to theaters. It's actually getting fairly good reviews. Um, I saw its Metacritic score was uh, pretty high the last time I saw it. I don't know if everybody's reviewed it yet. Um, I don't know if it's going to stay that high. But uh, I may be one of the dissenters here. Um, but uh, for a grade, which is what I used to do, and I used to throw a a uh, image up on the screen. I lost my images. I have no idea where they are. So these are the videos that you get now. Um, I have no fancy intro. Uh, maybe, you know, like, follow, subscribe if you uh, enjoyed this video. Uh, and maybe I'll get uh, 
enough money one day to have the kind of equipment to make fancy videos or hire somebody to help me make them. So uh, I'm going to give Turning Red a C plus. So that's that. Um, so hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you thought of Turning Red. Uh, am I being fair? Um, I don't like that, uh, those comments about how that film is not for you. Um, I definitely had those conversations when I was not that big of a fan of Encanto and, uh, people were like, well, you're not Colombian. The film is not for you. And I'm like, that film was made for more than Colombian people. Um, so it's, it's, should be universal. A lot of the themes should be universal and they should reach everybody. Uh, so, uh, I was reached by a theme in this movie about friendship. It did reach me and it was great. She has the best friends in the world. So, um, and with that, uh, I don't know what my next review will be, but I hope to do more of these in the future. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. And... Stop recording video button. I'm out.